I know about being at a small place is that personalities and culture can have a really big impact there. And it sounds like you made a, a choice then after working at Neptune for a little while to make a switch to a different company and you ended up at Transamerica. Um, can you talk? I'm really interested in the work that you're doing at Transamerica. Can you tell everybody what you're working on there and kind of the types of work that you do as a data scientist there? Sure. So I, there's a data science group that I'm a part of. Our team actually supports the entire company. So we have projects going on in a lot of different threads and I can talk about some of those if you want. What I've been working on since I started has been almost entirely in underwriting. And so for those that don't know, underwriting is really a risk assessment process for insurance policies. And I had never bought a life insurance policy on the retail market. Um, and I still haven't bought a life insurance <laughs> policy on the retail market. Um, employers often provide them, so many people don't have the experience. But if you go to the retail market and try and buy life insurance, it's a slow, cumbersome, invasive process. Um, the insurance companies often want a medical exam. They want blood and urine samples. They run tests on. They're trying to assess medical health. You know, what is there a good chance that you will live for X years where they can be profitable in collecting premiums or that you're going to die sooner and that's a difficult situation for them or just that they need to charge higher premiums if there's a higher risk. So this process though is very not amenable to many people, especially younger folks would like to pick up their phone, get their insurance policy, be done, right? No, no mess, no fuss. And so recognizing that companies like mine, a large insurance company has to figure out how to adapt and they realize that they have to. And so the question is how can we get information to assess risk without that blood and urine samples and so on, the medical information, can we assess risk in a different way with different information? And that's been largely what I've worked on. It's an insurance company that's been in business for 100 years. So in theory, we're sitting on lots of data that <clears throat> about our applicants, you know, what we knew about them when they applied and when they, you know, if they lived through the policy, if it's a term policy or if they died, and we should be able to mine that information and build models to help us assess risk. Unfortunately, a lot of that information is on paper applications that are scanned and stored as images. And so just understanding what data the company's sitting on um, and how we can leverage it and how we can supplement with other sorts of data moving forward has been a lot of what I've been working on yeah. with the goal of building some models. That's so interesting to me because it's such sort of a classical problem of like, can we predict how long somebody's going to live? Like, what do you need to use in order to predict that? Um, and it's fascinating to me that you're working on that as a mathematician and that that's just like your job. <laughs> I think that's really neat. It's fun. Yeah. It's um, interesting. So I, I was really interested when we talked earlier to hear a little bit about the interview process for getting a job at a company because I think it's really different than academic interviews. And I was wondering if you could talk, you have three different places now, and I'm sure a couple other interview experiences. What types of things ha come up in these interviews? What types of things are you asked to do? So um, maybe I'll just walk through them if that's okay. Yeah. Sandia was very much like an, an academic job interview. Um, they brought me in for a full day. I gave a talk about work that I'd done, about my master's project and about the consulting work that I'd done. Um, they didn't really grill me a whole lot, but they did offer me a job, so <laughs> that was that was great. But it wasn't. I can't point to a lot to prepare for in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, when I applied with Neptune, it was in some ways similar. They didn't even ask me to give a talk, but I spent time talking with different people in the company about the sorts of work that they did, and I think. Part of what they look for is communication. That in particular was communication skills um, and an interest in their work. They spent a lot of time telling me about the sorts of things they did and I think wanted to gauge my interest in engaging in those sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. 
Transamerica was a little more, it was also small groups in, in the interview process, but it was more targeted. There was a group that kind of asked questions about math and a group that kind of asked questions about statistics and a group that kind of asked questions about machine learning and, and algorithmic techniques that you might use to solve problems. Um, there was some discussion about pitfalls in modeling, you know, so you've trained a model, it works really well on your training set, but it doesn't work so well on your validation set. What's your reaction to that and how are you going to go about troubleshooting and fixing it? Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of experiential. Have you had the experience of actually working with the sorts of things that we work with? So getting pretty technical. It sometimes, sounds like, yeah. sometimes technical. I've been on other interviews for data science jobs that were actually coding tests, you know, they throw out problems and want you to write code right there. And you know, that's interesting too.